Hey, what's up, guys? Just up trying to get moving here this morning. Uh, been up all night, actually. Been having a... I always have a hard time sleeping, but... It's been worse here lately. A lot of anxiety. Got a lot of things going through my mind. Uh, me and Amy went to bed last night and I was laying there. She falls asleep so quick. Uh, it's easy to fall asleep quick when you have been a, just a good human being and a giving, unselfish, loving person your whole life. And that's my wife right there in a nutshell. Um, but she was, she fell asleep quick like always. And I was looking at her and there's a thing that ever since me and Amy got together that constantly I think about. Um, you know, the way I explain it, I always say that if my life was a painting and me and Amy never met, that painting would be mostly black, just real, real dark. There'd be some dark gray and a couple specks of light gray, but it would be pretty dark. Um, since Amy and I met, and I've had her, I always tell her that she is my time with her on this earth is the brightest parts of my life. Um, and I'm serious, there's not a day that goes by that I do not thank God for letting her be my life partner. Um, but I was looking at her last night, just thinking about how incredibly blessed I am to have someone like her as a wife. There's some verses in the Old Testament in the Bible where it talks about what a good wife is, how she's a joy to her husband and her children. And you know, how her husband praises her name at the city gates. And that's Amy. Uh, but it always takes me back to a what if. Uh, I always go back to, and what got me thinking of this, I can't find it. I was trying to find it again. There was a video. But of this girl helping this guy in a restaurant, and the guy was shaking like he had Parkinson's. But looking at her last night, I, it, it takes me back to a what if. You know, the, the first time I saw Amy, I she come over, we, me and some of my brothers were renting out the shotgun house. And she come by with a, a gal we knew that was a friend of hers named Joan, and Joan wanted a tattoo. And my buddy Eric was gonna give her a tattoo. And Joan and Amy come in and I saw them in the kitchen and I said to 
my homie Bobby. I said, Who's, who the fuck's that? And he goes, who? I said, who's that with Joan? And Bobby looked at him. And Amy's hair was extremely short then. I mean, way short. Like, way, way, way short. And she was a blonde. Uh, I normally went for, I mean, raven-haired, black-haired, brown-eyed, long-haired women. That's normally what I went for. Um, and Bobby looked over. He goes, I don't know, some, some gal would come over with Joan to get a fucking tattoo. And she wasn't what I normally went for. But there was something about her that was, I don't know, it drew me to her. There was something just different about her. And I said, I'm going to go try to talk to her, see if I can get her to go out sometime or so. So I went up and worked my way into the conversation and was talking to her. And, you know, I said, you want to go do something sometime? And she said, well, I'm seeing somebody. I said, okay. So... I went back, sat down, my homie Bobby goes, what'd she say, man? And I said, uh, she said that she's seeing somebody. Um, you know, at least she ain't a fucking whore. So I went on with my life, Amy went on with hers. And I mean, when I say I went on with my life, I. Back then, I wasn't even really looking for a relationship. I, I was like Nate Dog. He's out hoeing right now. I was a butterfly man. I went from flower to flower. I wasn't looking to, to get married again. I, I was just fucking and drinking and partying and fighting. And uh, I forgot about her. Uh, I was moving on and. The what if that I always come back to. I was in a bar called the Treasure Chest. Kay was the woman that owned it. And I was sitting up at the bar and Randy, this guy Randy, I was fucking with Randy, giving Randy a hard time. He actually stood up to me that night. And I looked at him, I said, Randy, did you just stand up to me? And he just stared at me, and I gave him a hug. I was waiting for him to do that, and I'm glad he did. Uh, but a lot of times I'd fuck with people just to get them to stand up for themselves and not leave them alone, you know, but I was sitting there drinking a beer and I heard an argument, a commotion going on. And what you got to understand is it took me a long time to learn how to treat a woman. I had to, I had to teach myself. Um, having a daughter helped a lot because I started looking at every woman like somebody else's daughter. And I started looking at women like, how would I want my daughter treated like this? And believe me when I say my daughter is breathtakingly beautiful. And I'm not just saying that because she's my daughter. She is breathtakingly beautiful. I'll put a picture up on uh, my community page to go with this video. Uh, but I'm gonna probably make sure there's no comments on that because when it comes to my little girl, uh, I have no patience whatsoever for ignorant comments. But I heard this commotion and I turned around and some dude had some gal up against the wall choking her. 
and he was yelling. Well, normally in those situations, to my shame, like I said, I had to teach myself how to treat women. You know, normally I'd have, I was so damn mean. I'd have, normally I'd have been like, bitch probably deserves it. Fucking, I didn't get involved in shit like that. And I don't know, I've thought about this night a lot. I mean, everything about me and Amy getting, getting together went against my normal nature at the time. Uh, and I didn't even know when he was choking her that that was Amy. I just seen a guy choking some gal and him screaming it. I don't know. The only thing I can figure is I was in a real bad mood that night. But I got off the bar stool and I walked over and I snatched him up and I had him by the throat holding him up against the wall with my right hand. And I, I remember I was pissed. I kept saying, how do you like it, motherfucker? How do you like it? And I choked him till he literally went unconscious. And when he went unconscious, I let go of him. Well, while I was choking him, I could hear somebody. They weren't yelling, but it was a soft voice saying, please stop, please stop. Well, I had tunnel vision on this motherfucker. Uh, I must have been pissed off about something, I don't know, but I had tunnel vision on him. And I could hear somebody saying, please stop, but it mattered not to me who that was why they were saying, please stop. My focus was on this guy. And it isn't because I was such a chival chivalrous guy, you know, and at the time and stuff. But after he went unconscious and I let go of him, my brain popped back to, I've got my beer on the bar. So I turned to go to the bar to get my beer and there's Amy standing there. Well, she had been the one that he was choking, but that's when I recognized her. And I was like, oh. I said, hey, how you doing? You know, we got to talking, and then we shot some pool. He woke up, left the bar. And then we kind of started seeing each other. Uh, and I could go on to more stories about me and Amy when we first got together. I mean, we... We started out, I was a gypsy and going from shotgun house to shotgun house, sleeping on couches. We did that for a long time. Uh, then we got a hotel room, stayed in that for a while. Then we got an apartment, house out, or a manufactured home out in Arizona, and then house here in St. Louis. But I always come back to that night, and I think, what if? What if she wasn't in there that night? What if I had responded the way I normally did? Ah, oh, fuck it. That probably deserves it. Sat there and drank my beer. What if? I mean, there's so many. We could have just, me and Amy have this relationship that a lot of people, they just don't get to experience in their lifetime. And we could have just skipped off of each other like a rock skipping off of a lake. And when I think about that, I get goosebumps. It terrifies me. I was talking about that painting of my life. My life with her in it, there's this bright, brilliant light right in the middle of that painting. The outer edges, yeah, they're black and dark, but there's all this beautiful light coming off that light out of the metal. And that's my painting with Amy in my life. But I saw this YouTube video the other day, and I can't find it, and I was a short. And there's a young guy, you know, mid-20s, and his girlfriend are in this restaurant. And if this is true, I mean, if it wasn't staged and acted out and stuff, I feel bad for this guy uh, because he missed his Amy. She just skipped off of him. There's this 
guy trying to eat in the video, and he's shaking real bad like he's got Parkinson's. And he can hardly take a bite out of the sandwich in this restaurant. And the camera's showing different people sitting in the restaurant. Some are trying not to laugh. Others are looking at this man in disgust. And then you got that young couple. Well, the girl gets up. She sees the guy shaking. And she, she stands up and starts walking towards the guy shaking. And her boyfriend grabs her wrist and says something to her. And she says something to him and keeps walking towards the guy that's having problems eating. Well, the boyfriend looking at her and then he shakes his head and he gets up and he walks out of the restaurant. She goes over, she says something to the man, she sits down and she's helping him eat his food. And at the end of the video, the guy stops shaking and he, he tells her, you know, he's just acting. Uh, he doesn't really have anything and he gives her some flowers. But that young man that was so insecure in himself, so insecure that he had a problem with his girlfriend getting up and going and helping a man that was having a hard time eating. The only thing I can figure is that's insecurity. He's so insecure in himself that he's worried about her helping this other guy that bothers him somehow. Everybody else just sat there. Some people in the restaurant were actually laughing about it like it was funny. And whoever you are, dude, I wish I could find the video, the one that walked out. You just lost a woman of quality. Your insecurity just cost you a woman who has compassion and love in her heart for other human beings, who has the courage to get up and try to help this man when other people are laughing at him, and she might get laughed at too. You just walked out on your Amy. And I feel bad for you, dude because you have no self-confidence whatsoever. If that was my wife, the pride I would feel, because I know my Amy, and that's how she is. I'd walk over with her and I'd say, dude, my wife's got you. And I'd sit down there and just look at her with pride in my heart. This young man, his insecurity cost him his Amy. The rock skipped off the lake. The only person in the whole restaurant that had enough compassion and love in her heart to get up and help that man. And you walked out on her? You're a damn fool. You just walked out on your Amy. You lost a woman of quality. I was thinking about that all night long. And it's, my mind's weird. I was watching Amy sleep. And I was thanking God for blessing me by the bringing her into my life. And then I got to think about that video. And then and I got to thinking about, again, I think about it all the time. What if? What if she wasn't there that night? 
what if I wouldn't have responded the way I did? Miami could have, we could have just skipped. Life is just so strange. Uh, it's so strange. But that one, we were only in that bar that night, maybe an hour and a half. But the moment I got off that bar stool and locked on tunnel vision on that guy, by both of us being in there that night, the events that happened that night, it's what finally brought us together. And that one little moment in time, if we both wouldn't have been there, if things would have went different, just like a rock off a lake, we would have skipped off each other. And it terrifies me, but at the same time, it makes me just praise God and thank Him. I had a song written for Amy. It's called My Greatest Gift. There's a company called Songfinch. And for our last anniversary, you've been married almost 30 years. You start running out of creative things to, to get your spouse for an anniversary. And uh, I saw that ad for Songfinch. And they've got thousands of different artists you can choose from. You choose the genre of music, uh, the mood of the music. Uh, and I mean, they got everything from gospel to hip hop to classic rock, heavy metal, country. I went with folk and gospel music. And the mood I went with was romantic. And you send in an initial thing you fill out of what you want the song to be about. Main parts of the song you want. Um, you pick your artist. And then who the song's for, who you are, the purpose of the song, all kinds of stuff. Once you do that, they'll do a first copy of it and everything. And if you don't like things, you, you can you keep collaborating with the artist. The artist writes the song, sings the song. And I went with a guy named Hunter Sparkman. He's a guy who lives in Nashville, Tennessee. And he sings gospel music and folk music and I always tell Amy she's my most precious treasure. And I told this guy my life was dark. It was hell before I met her. Uh, she's my lighthouse. She, it, I told him about the painting, you know, how it would be just shades of black and gray. Um, one of my videos I've got on YouTube is that song that I had written for Amy. I'll put it in my community page so you guys can hear it if you watch this video. So this video, I'll have me and Amy's song on the community page, and it'll be the same date as this video for people whenever I'm gone. Uh, you know, and I told him that she's my lighthouse. She's that North Star that always keeps me focused and going in the right direction. And just all kinds of stuff. And I can remember telling Nate Dog, Nate, I've tried to tell this woman, being bipolar, my emotions are intense, all of them. I have no gentle emotions. 
I think that's why I talk so much is because I feel everything so much. Whether it's anger, whether it's love, whether it's sadness, everything is intense. But I said, Nate, I'm not going to hold it against this guy. Uh, if he can't say how I feel in a song, I've been trying all these years to get her to tell her how much I love her, but there just there aren't adequate words in the English language. And I know it sounds like a bunch of BS and corny, but me and Amy have something that's not just mental, physical. There's a real serious spiritual thing to it. Uh, I said, I'm not going to hold it against this guy. I've been trying all these years, you know, to tell her how I feel, and there just ain't words for it. And he did a pretty darn good job. Uh, you know, it's the only thing... He wrote the song, and I don't write songs. He wrote the, mus the music. He took what I wanted the song to be and made a song out of it. And I found him on Instagram, and I wrote him a message, and I said, you did a wonderful job on that song for my wife. Thank you so very much. Uh, and he said, you're very welcome. But when Amy hears it, she goes, that's my song. <laughs> but he, he named the song My Greatest Gift You Are My Greatest Gift instead of My Greatest Treasure My Greatest Gift I guess it went with the other words better but it's the same thing and actually a greatest gift is better uh, because that's what she is Hold on a sec. I always say I don't own Amy. She's my wife. But she belongs to God. And actually a greater my greatest gift is better because that's what she is, is a gift from God. Um, That's just a weird thing about life, you know, how that one moment in time, if it wouldn't have went exactly the way it went, my life would be so much different. And then that guy that walked out on his girlfriend for helping that man in that restaurant, it's like, you dumbass, you just walked out on a woman of quality. While the rest of the women are laughing and looking in disgust, the girl you were with had love and compassion in her heart enough to get up and try to help the man. And you walked out on her because you are an insecure little boy. But I just wanted to share that with you guys. It's, it's been on my mind. <laughs> Since that night, I, I go back to that what if often in my life since I've met Amy. Um, but all night long. That's what I mean, it's weird the way my mind works. I'm looking at my wife sleeping, thinking how lucky I am, and thanking God. And that took me back to that what if. What if we would have skipped off each other that night? And then that took me to that video. And I've been trying to find that video. I can't find it now. But pay attention in your life. And I promise you someday, every one of you, if you're blessed to live long enough, you might even be doing it right now. Looking back on your life and saying, man, if this would have happened or... If that wouldn't have happened, or I've really had the chance to reflect on my life and to be able to see the way my God has moved me in different directions and kept me safe and just 
the different things that have happened, it's really fucking incredible. Uh, it's really incredible. Reminds me of that song, How Great Thou Art. Because uh, God is truly great. But I just wanted to share that with you all. It's been a long night of really deep thinking. But much love and respect. Carpe diem sees the day, motherfuckers. Because uh, ain't none of us guaranteed tomorrow, not even if you got perfect health. <clears throat> much love and respect to all of you. And remember, just do your best. Your best might not be as good as somebody else's best. Uh, but as long as you're doing your best, that's all that matters. If you're doing your very best every day, you can hold your chin up and look in the mirror and be proud, you know. But peace out, guys.